Listen, I just bought an Apple Mini with the M1 processor. What up, y'all? This is your boy Tech G back with another video to talk about the Apple M1 CPU. And apparently there's some potential issues with it that can cause some headaches for some people out there like me who just bought a brand new Mac mini with the M1 processor, as you can see right here. I haven't even hooked this thing up yet. It's been sitting on my desk for two weeks and I haven't even turned it on yet. So let's see what all the fuss is about. So shout out to all these MIT researchers always out there finding problems with things. Appreciate that. It says uh, the MIT researchers discover a new flaw in Apple's M1 CPUs that cannot be patched. I don't like the sound of that. Like I said, I just bought one of these machines. It says a novel hardware attack dubbed Pac-Man has been demonstrated against Apple's M1 process or chipsets, potentially arming a malicious actor with the capability to gain arbitrary code execution on Mac OS systems. It leverages speculative execution attacks to bypass an important memory protection mechanism known as the ARM pointer authentication, which is a security feature that is used to enforce pointer integrity. It says what's more concerning is that while the hardware mechanisms used by Pac-Man cannot be patched with software features, memory corruption bugs can be. It says the vulnerability is rooted in pointer authentication codes or PACs, which are a line of defense introduced in the ARM 64E architecture that aims to detect and secure against unexpected changes to pointers. And pointers are basically objects that reference an address location in memory. You guys go click on my playlist tab where I posted an IT fundamentals class and an A plus hardware class. We talk about this stuff in those lessons. It says PAC aims to solve a common problem in software security, such as as memory corruption vulnerabilities, which are often exploited by overriding control data in memory or the pointers to redirect code execution to an arbitrary location controlled by the attacker. It says, while strategies like address space layout randomization has been devised to increase the difficulty of performing buffer overflow attacks, the goal of PACs is to ascertain the validity of pointers with minimal size and performance impact, effectively preventing an adversary from creating valid pointers for use in an exploit. This is achieved by protecting a pointer with a cryptographic hash called a pointer authentication code or a PAC to ensure its integrity. So Apple explains pointer authentication as follows. Apple says, pointer authentication works by offering a special CPU instruction to add a cryptographic signature or a PAC to unuse high order bits of a pointer before storing the pointer. Another instruction removes and authenticates the signature after reading the pointer back from memory, any change to the stored value between the write and read invalidates the signature. The CPU interprets authentication failure as memory corruption and sets a high order bit in the pointer, making the pointer invalid and causing the app to crash. Goes on to say, but Pac-Man removes the primary barrier to conducting control flow hijacking attacks on a platform protected using pointer authentication. It combines memory corruption and speculative execution to circumvent the security feature, leaking PAC verification results via microarchitectural side channels without causing any crashes. The attack method, in a nutshell, makes it possible to distinguish between the correct PAC and incorrect hash, permitting a bad actor to brute force the correct PAC value while suppressing crashes and construct a control flow hijacking attack on a PA-enabled victim program or operating system. Since the crash prevention, for its part, succeeds because each each pack value is speculatively guessed by exploiting a time-based side channel via the translation look aside buffer using a prime plus probe attack. So speculative execution vulnerabilities as observed in the case of Spectre and Meltdown, weaponized out of order execution, the technique that is used to bring about a performance improvement in modern microprocessors by predicting the most likely path of a program's execution flow. However, it's worth noting that the threat model presumes that there already exists an exploit memory corruption vulnerability in a victim program or the kernel, which in turn allows the unprivileged attacker of a malicious app to inject rogue code into certain memory locations in the victim process. Since this attack has important implications for designers looking to implement future processors featuring pointer authentication and has broad implications for the security of future control flow integrity premises.
alternatives, the researcher concluded. So here's an update. Hopefully we get some good information here. Apple says, we want to thank the researchers for their collaboration as this proof of concept advances our understanding of these techniques. It says, based on our analysis, as well as the details shared with us by the researchers, we have concluded this issue does not pose an immediate risk to our users and is insufficient to bypass operating system security protections on its own. Finally, the article says, the vulnerability echoes another unfixable threat dubbed Miracles that came to light last year, which allows two or more malicious apps installed in the machine to create a covert channel to exchange data between them without using memory, sockets, files, or any other typical operating system features. So there you have it, folks. For those of you out there who own a Mac with the M1 CPU processor chip, like I do, well, MIT has found a possible flaw that they claim cannot be patched. And normally that will cause me to take my machine and throw it up against the wall or at least take it back to the Apple store and get a refund. But thankfully, Apple says this isn't a major concern to worry about. Thank God, because I paid a pretty little penny for my Mac mini with the M1 one processor that I bought. And then like a week or so later, Apple decides to come out with the M2 processor. So anyways, I just wanted to share that with you all for those of you with the M1 to let you know that, hey, your Mac should be good to go. Anyways, hit the like, share and subscribe button on your way out. And I will highlight you on the next video. Peace.